Laura Logan, thank you for joining us. I'm glad you're here. Thank and, you very much for having me, Lance. And, and uh, I want to jump right in. You did a very courageous deep dive. Listen, you, you know, you're doing deep dives on everything. You're exposing... You're kind of, you remind me of like Trump in the sense that there's not a there's not a prov provocative subject you don't wade into. So but most recently you were on the Hill. Now, this is what we're all watching. You were on the Hill. It was uh, Senator mm -hmm. uh, what it, with Johnson. Right. And you were up yeah. there speaking and testifying, covering a broad spectrum of things. But tell us what was the uh, what was the point you wanted to make to the government and to america about this subject of uh, the dangerous era we're in with regarding freedom of speech well i was asked to testify uh, about media censorship and the first amendment and you know one of the points that i made is will be very obvious to most americans is that the founding fathers when they put the first amendment first it wasn't by chance, it was by design, because they knew how important it would be to guarantee that freedom of speech, because what does it really represent? It represents accountability. You cannot begin to have accountability if you can't even identify the problem honestly and if people don't have the truth. So, but, but perhaps the most important point that I really made up there was that we have allowed in these um, omnibus spending bills that they shoved through, you know, Congress and shoved down our throats. We've allowed cutouts for uh, radical organizations who are implementing, uh, basically, th these are ideological zealots who are implementing a radical ideology using taxpayer funds. And if you're fighting something in this country right now, if you're fighting for election integrity or maybe your mom's for liberty, fighting for the rights of kids in schools, you will face a cons consistent problem of trying to raise money. Because this is what you hear all the time from people engaged in fighting for one cause or another is that it's hard to raise funds. But how come your adversaries never have any problem? Well, one of the reasons is that they have figured out how to launder money through nonprofit organizations who hide behind their 5013C status in violation of the rules, okay. by the way, because they're supposed right, to be nonprofit. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. I want, I want the whole Flashpoint audience to watch you in action up on the Hill. I think we've got okay. a clip, and let's hear her live breaking this, uh, this, this argument out there up on the Hill. Go ahead and play it. Can, you said you've been targeted over the last 10 years. <clears throat> Can you describe what precipitated your targeting? Yes, I'm reporting the truth about Benghazi. I was attacked by one of those NGOs that masquerades as a nonpartisan watchdog in violation of its 5013C status. It occupies a highly partisan position. I'm talking about Media Matters for America. I'm sure there's many doctors in this room, scientists who've been attacked by the same people. Um, the same people that run that, David Brock, for example, another political assassin, now runs an organization called Facts First USA, which is designed to make sure that your research Dr. Hazan never reaches, never reaches the people or the public. There are other organizations like Defeat Disinfo, which claims to be a PAC that goes after disinformation, particularly set up to target COVID and throughout COVID with General Stanley McChrystal and the other people that advise that organization. But what, you know, Senator Johnson, it's not a secret that these organizations exist. What is not widely known and talked about is that it's paid for by us. It's paid for by the taxpayers in your omnibus spending bills that get shoved through the House and the Senate against the will of the people of this country. They are, there are cutouts for these NGOs. And what they do is they launder this money, they pass it from one NGO to the next, and in the name of preventing the spread of disinformation, they censor, silence, intimidate, and punish. Silence, intimidate, punish. People that speak the truth, folks, this is the most important front line of the spiritual warfare. We talk about there's a spiritual warfare. Even the secular people use this language, battle for the soul of America. For those of you that are enlightened, that you have some kind of a biblical worldview, understand there are powerful forces throughout history that want to control the media narrative that comes out that affects the population so that you'll have people, uh, so you have people being radically propagandized in order to align against the truth. What Laura's talking about is like Media Matters and Southern Poverty Law Center and these fact checkers that are on Facebook. These are funded ideologues that are radically in alignment with powerful structures that you're 
indirectly resourcing through your own taxes. And then I don't even understand, now I studied this for seven years, how the NGO shell game works, but they can funnel their money back and forth because it really, this is the spiritual warfare. They have an ideological agenda and they and they use these 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 seemingly neutral sources, and I love the language they use, Southern poverty loss, as though they're really caring about poor people. They're a bunch of rich white liberals that are trying to push a progressive Marxist agenda. They're not worried about poor people. But so, so Laura, your, your reaction to that uh, from the Hill, what's, I mean, other than we got the, we got the sound bite, but how do people technically respond to this? What, what can the average, and I'm a big believer in the grassroots, we're showing it with Trump, we're showing it with in Texas, what can the grassroots do? Well, Lance, you know, it's interesting that you reference spiritual warfare several times, right? Because one of the things that taxpayers are funding that most people don't know about is organizations like Humanist International, which are being funded through, you know, the Department of Labor and Human Rights and Democracy, Human Rights and, and Labor in the State Department, right? So your State Department, which is a, you think is doing diplomacy and protecting the interests of the United States abroad, what are they doing instead? They're they're funding networks of atheists through organizations like Humanist International in countries like Nepal, who are hiding behind these organizations and subverting those governments. So you're interfering in governments all over the world. They're doing the same thing with the Russian Orthodox Church, funneling money to the Ukraine, break away the Ukraine Orthodox Church. And people are actually being harmed by this in Russia, which is why Vladimir Putin is requiring NGOs to all be registered now and taking action against it. because. Other countries have recognized what the American people have yet to recognize, that your tax dollars are being used to subvert democracy and freedom and human rights and all those things that we hold dear in this country. They're being used to subvert those things and deny them to people across the world, okay, and you're being right. lied right, about so, it. So, so so let me say this. First thing you've got to do, first thing you've got to be aware. I, when you know about it, <laughs> speak up. Because if you believe in God, don't funnel money to atheist organizations. And, and so a, a large part of this is going to be the information. You know, Wilberforce overturned slavery in Great Britain, and he said the strategy was a sustained pattern of public persuasion. That's why you're important. Listen, man, I talk, I talk to Christians all the time. I say, all right, so when you pray, do you know when God is answering your prayers? When Elon Musk took over Twitter, that was an answer to prayer. It didn't happen in your typical Pentecostal fashion. That's why you might miss it. But God took the platform so that Tucker and Laura Logan could say the truth and not be censored by our own intelligence communities who dominate those platforms. So being informed, the sustained pattern of public persuasion is what Flashpoint's all about. And so uh, I want you to take a look at this trailer uh, for Laura's uh, documentary because the story is still coming out and the story will focus on the full and truthful account of the actual events that unfolded on January 6th. Uh, it was released last September, but I think we need to see it because they're going to make this a premise. I was there that day. I was right there in the event itself, and we covered on Flashpoint Live what we believed was going on, and they took us off the air. They didn't like what we said. All right, let's watch this promo. <laughs> You've learned a lot more about January 6th. You talked to hundreds of defendants. What have you learned? Well, first I've learned about pain. I believe in my nephew. I am proud of him. He was just larger than life. We wanted to come and kind of just share what really happened today. He had never been in trouble before in his life. So this was just so overwhelming. I was sitting in my home and I got a call from his uncle. What did he say? They robbed him of his hope, his will to live. They took his fight away from him. They broke him. They completely broke him, and they broke his heart. It's hard to find the truth these days, and it's needed now more than ever. 
We've traveled the country to bring you honest, accurate reporting. Bottom line, Lord, if they didn't want people going to the Capitol, they didn't want people even getting close to the Capitol, it never would have happened. It happened because they wanted it to happen. No one was stopping you. This is the government we're talking about, okay? Like they have like nukes and F-15s. They can do whatever they want to stop average people like me. 34-year-old Roseanne Boylan was one of four people killed. This was a woman who got pushed down, smothered, trampled, and then beaten. Had this been covered at all by anyone else in the media? No. And they named me as one of the insurrectionists that was preventing the cops from rescuing her. Was that true? Absolutely not. This crutch was right at my feet, and I put it above my head, and I said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, please stop this. Jeremy was at the Capitol providing security. I mean, he's quite literally the poster boy for the special forces. When you were arrested, they never sat you down and said, is this yours? No, because they're the same officers that recruited me on December 9th of 2020. From Department of Homeland Security. It's the same two guys. These people are hiding all of this information, and judges have let them get away with that. You could be here forever. I will be here as long as the American people leave me here. I'm Laura Logan with the rest of the story. Join us. Got to go back to you, Laura Logan, for this uh, powerful documentary. I want, I want a whole new surge of people that haven't seen it to go see it. And I suppose they could see this on, on your account there on Twitter X, right? Yes, right. at Laura Logan. All right. So uh, recently there's been some new developments that have happened in terms of like uh, the, the, the judges that are saying that a lot of these cases in terms mm -hmm. of the duration of the sentencing was based upon them interrupting a judicial procedure. But that's being rejected. It wasn't a judicial procedure. It was a legislative procedure. And now footage Mike Johnson is released, uh, fortunately, because Steve Baker, who works for the Blaze, is being set up by the FBI to be sent. To, he just he was just walked off in, in iron shackles. A journalist, no different than the New York Times, that went in that same day, but they're going after the the uh, the, the Blaze journalist because they want to make an example of him to silence, like you said, to assassinate the journalist. Give us an update on this January 6th. Do you believe, in your opinion, that there were, uh, like, you know, plainclothes FBI people and stuff like that that Christopher Wray won't tell us about? Were there, were there suspicious activities like that with the government in the crowd? What are your thoughts? Well, I don't have to believe it because we know it from the evidence. And the FBI at first, you know, wouldn't say anything about it. And over various court proceedings, they've been forced to admit that they had people on the crowd and that they were not the only agency. There's some that they offered up in one of the Proud Boys trials who worked um, for one of the uh, local uh, police forces, you know, and a special operations unit of that, of that police force. And so there are multiple agencies that had people on the ground that day, and we haven't even begun to scratch the surface. I interviewed Clay Higgins, you know, who's the congressman out of Louisiana, and, and he believes that there is at least 200. And, and he's been investigating this and has the receipts that he couldn't share with us. But, you know, um, and I have spoken to him recently, and he is encouraged by what Mike Johnson is doing. There's new footage that's just been released that shows Kamala Harris leaving the Capitol hours before when uh, they actually said that she was still there when the Capitol was breached. And they submitted that information, which was false information that they knew was false, that they put, you know, in January six cases, I think, for something like a year. And I do have to say, Lance, I'm glad you raised Steve Baker, because what's important for people to understand about his case is that this is a man who just literally walked through the Capitol doing his job as a journalist. He works for the Blaze Media. And he didn't harm anyone. He didn't do anything. He didn't do... I would have done exactly what Steve had done if I'd been there, and they would be coming for me today. But it is important for people to know that it's not just because of what Steve Baker did on January 6th that he's being targeted. It's because of the strength of his reporting since January 6th, because he exposed, for example, one of his big stories showed that Nancy Pelosi's chief bodyguard lied when he was um, testifying about what happened on January 6th. And when he said he was in one place, there is security camera footage that was given to Steve Baker that he reported on very diligently that showed that he wasn't anywhere near the Capitol building at that time. I believe he was in an underground parking lot. Right. And he's captured on multiple security cameras. So we know that they've lied. And you know what you don't do when you've got the truth on your side, Lance? 
You don't need to falsify evidence. You don't need to put people in jail to silence them. You don't need judges that refuse to allow the First Amendment as a defense when we know that that's what people were doing, exercising their First Amendment rights. And I would point you to two things. Matthew Perna, he's the one mentioned in my episode. Uh, we did two pieces on him. He killed himself because of the sentencing enhancements that you referenced. We've just had a court now say that the Department of Justice does not have the right to just keep enhancing your sentence, which is essentially trying to convict you of crimes that they never charged you with and that they couldn't prove, otherwise they would have charged you with them, like a terrorist enhancement. That's what pushed Matthew Perna to kill himself, because he, he, he had accepted that he was going down for something that, you know, that was completely innocent, but he, he just couldn't go down for five, ten years and longer. And then the other thing that's really important is you had condemned USA. Trennis Evans was in that promo, right? Trennis Evans was one of the people that submitted an amicus brief that is responsible for that 9-0 Supreme Court ruling that addressed that, you know, obstruction charge, right? This being a, you know, not being a judicial proceeding. And so there's work being done by, you know, very courageous Americans all across this country. Trennis was convicted of a misdemeanor for, for taking a shot of, uh, I think it was Fireball, it might have been whiskey, in Nancy, one of Nancy Pelosi's, you know, uh, 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 rooms up in the Capitol there. But he didn't harm anyone, and he was pleading for people to be peaceful. And they put him in solitary confinement for a misdemeanor offense in a maximum oh, yeah. security listen, prison listen, listen. in Houston. <laughs> Listen, I got, I got to jump in here, and I, and I want to jump to the other guys here because I'm interested in their response to this. But what you got to realize is this guy, Steve Baker, who's, who's the latest one as the casualty of this, that is a blaze reporter, he's the one who exposed the pipe bomb, bomb fraud. This is the biggest. Uh, Bongino's right. This is bigger than anything else, They're bigger than Watergate, because it shows that the federal government planted a fake bomb, a pipe bomb, because they were looking at multiple scenarios that day. I mean, what happens if the crowd doesn't go in? Well, we have to have something. Plan B is there's a pipe bomb outside of the vice president Kamala Harris's, you know, office or something. You find out she wasn't there. Pence wasn't where he was supposed to be. She wasn't where they said she was. And nobody cared about the pipe bomb. But this guy here gets a hold of, thank God, we got a couple of underground supporters up there in the police department, FBI. They said, hey, here's the camera footage. We can show you how casually everybody, everybody treated the pipe bomb news. Kids are walking past it because they knew it wasn't a legitimate pipe bomb. It was, it was there for theatric effect. And that story's gotten shoved to the side. That's a Steve Baker issue. Him working with Darren Beatty at, at uh, revolver. These guys are us. They're the citizen journalists that are exposing the left. And my concern is the FBI is going after after Baker also on interstate commerce. You, it shows you how desperate they are. When the FBI says, well, if we can't get him on one thing, we'll get him on selling his footage, maybe, to HBO, or uh, they, that's illegal. He should, we know he's selling footage. So the government is weaponized to try to put you in jail, and I'm trying to find a faith perspective for these poor folks that are suffering there. Rob, you're a pastor. This is almost like uh, Christians in the Iron Curtain suffering in prison. And what do you say to these folks? I mean, there may be some daylight in the future, but do you ever think about that? How, how are these people suffering and how do you, what, what sustains them? Well, we have three parishioners who currently are facing charges from January 6th, Yaka Masakoy, John Strand, and Mark Ibrahim. And our church financially assists them, um, and, and we've done fundraisers for them as well. I would say every church in America should embrace these folks who have not received due process and have been unjustly, um, well, tortured as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mark Ibrahim, a, a DEA agent at the time, was permitted to carry his weapon. Uh, he was there, never stepped foot in the Capitol, and, and no charges were, were placed upon him until he testified on Tucker that he knew there were undercover FBI agents there because his brother is an FBI agent. He knew him to be there. He trained the other FBI agents in weapons usage. Um, and he was getting ready to be a CIA ground operator going to Langley. He, and, and after he was on Tucker, they arrested him. And uh, he's, he's facing uh, unbelievable uh, time in prison. He just had a child, he and his, his spouse, and it's, it's, it's criminal what they're doing. Siaka Masakoy, his, 
his wife is pregnant. They arrest him when they could have, they just call him, but they wanted to make a public spectacle of him. And and this man, you know, they, they, they increase the charges when your social media site defends your position on January 6th that you believe the election was stolen. So then they, they drop charges on him. And then finally, John Strand, here he was he was assisting Dr. Gold, Simone Gold, as her security detail. She gets a misdemeanor. He gets the book thrown at him. And, and he did the exact same thing she did. He had a public defender. But it was all because of his social media account that the judge threw everything he had at him, including the kitchen sink. This is unbelievable. And finally, you know, 35 buildings are burned. Endless cars are destroyed during inauguration night. No arrests. But we're going after grandmothers. We're going after everybody that is innocent. This insurrection was weaponless. The only one killed, Ashley Babbitt, not even white. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, my bomb, my car was bombed by Antifa. Do I make a big deal out of it? I hardly ever talk about it. They bombed my car on the inauguration. But uh, hey, how can we support you? Real quick, give us, uh, if people want to know more how to support your people, I, I just didn't even know you had that story. Uh, where do they go to support these people? Well, we, we just, we, we, it's godspeak.com. You're going to uh, be able, you can you can earmark it. Um, of course, all donations to the church have to just be given to the church, but we as a church support them. We, we give them a, a monthly stipend to help with their legal bills. Um, we also do periodic fundraisers. You can tune in at godspeak.com and we'll give you updates on that. But currently, okay. any ability to help them with, we do. All right, M M Mark Meckler, get ready. Go to uh, uh, Graphic 18 on the deep state elections. Uh, here's where the America is at. They're going to have to be real careful in the State of the Union tonight. Pull that graphic up on. Uh, is it likely that U.S. intelligence agencies were controlling the outcome? This is Graphic 18. Very likely that agencies were seeking to control the outcome of the 2024 election. I guess you could say, I would love to see the question about January 6th. Is it likely that the FBI had undercover agents? Um, very likely 31%, somewhat likely 21%. Folks, that's 52% of Americans across the board say, yeah, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't trust the agency. It's not like they're running on big trust right now. By the way, if we have, as uh, Representative Clay Higgins, check this guy out. Laura mentioned him, did a great interview with Tucker. If this guy, if, if, and he's, he has the data, if we've got 200, he said, maybe three or 400 agents wearing MAGA hats, looking like they were Trump people in the crowd, I didn't see them stopping traffic, did you? I didn't see any MAGA people blinking their arms and saying, stand. I saw a whole bunch of facilitating going in. This thing's got to get exposed. That's why shows like this are so important. Okay, uh, Brother Mark, You've been listening patiently for the last 10 minutes. What are your thoughts on this or any of these other subjects? Hey, look, J6 is a black spot in American history. Uh, these people have been deprived of due process. We've gone from a state in, in my lifetime of what I would describe as soft tyranny, where most people don't feel it and most people don't notice it, to now we live in a state of hard tyranny. We are rapidly sliding towards totalitarianism. I talked to a lot of people who came from socialist countries. They laugh at us when people say that they think we're becoming a social democracy. We are becoming a totalitarian state. I have a lot of friends that have suffered in J6. And in other raids, people like James O'Keefe, who's a, part, a journalist whose apartment was raided. Look, I have faith in God and I have faith in the American people though. And I think we're gonna pull out of this I think that a lot of people are in this fight. We saw some great results in Texas in the primaries uh, over the last couple of days. So I think things are turning. I think the evil is being exposed. People are seeing it for what it is. We're seeing that in the polling. And I honestly believe things are going to turn around. I realize I'm, I'm one of the few people that's positive, but that's just the way I see things out there in America today.